living in a city or living in a rural area or anywhere we are always exposed with chemicals in our environment when people talk about hormones most of these people they focus on the sex hormones for example when people say that hormones are why men are usually quite hairy and women in their period become moody but it's not only really that because there are at least 50 different type of these chemical messengers at work in our body even at this very minute To begin to understand our hormones, we should first know about our endocrine system. The endocrine system produces, releases, and also reabsorbs the hormones. The endocrine system works alongside with the nervous system in order to form the control system of the body. The nervous system provide a very fast and narrowly targeted system to turn on specific glands and muscles throughout the body. But our endocrine system, they prefer slow and wider stream of data. It secretes hormones that travel through our blood, not through our neurons. So they move more slowly, but they also produce widespread effects that last a whole lot longer than an actual potential. The endocrine system's organs are scattered all over the place in the body. The endocrine system also includes a few organs like the gonads, the bones, the kidney, the liver, and the heart, where all of them are actually having a secondary endocrine functions. Our ordinary everyday lives are full of chemicals which escape from surrounding objects. Some have a special characteristic. They are capable of hijacking our hormonal intimacy, blocking our hormones or imitating them and affecting their levels. They are called endocrine disruptors. An endocrine disrupting chemical is a chemical that in some way interferes with the body's endocrine system. So that's the system that produces, uh, regulates, and uh, deals with the body's many hormones like estrogen, testosterone, thyroid, and so on. And so an endocrine disruptor can interfere with either how much is produced, how much is sent where it's supposed to go, if you will, they're, they're messengers. They carry information from one organ to the other. Often highly potent, so uh, these messages and signals have to be finely tuned. It's like, you know, someone switches on a light and someone else has to switch it off again. So all these reactions on, off have to be very carefully controlled and foreign chemicals that interfere with this in some way um, can have uh, fairly drastic unwanted effects on our health. The body secretes the male sexual hormone, testosterone, in precise amounts and at specific times. No more, no less than necessary. A minute quantity is extremely effective. But endocrine disruptors found in plastics, phthalates for instance, can dupe the hormonal system and take over its mechanisms by blocking testosterone action. Endocrine disruptors interfere with subtle hormonal maneuvers. The result is like playing a Chopin sonata with a hammer. Dioxins refer to a group of toxic chemical compounds 
that share certain chemical structures and biological characteristics. The example of dioxin is like chlorinated dibenzyl p-dioxins, CDDs, chlorinated dibenzyl furans, CDF, certain polychlorinated biphenyl, PCB. Dioxins can be released into the environment through forest fires, backyard burning of trash, certain industrial activities, and residue from past commercial burning of waste. Dioxins break down very slowly and past releases of dioxins from both man-made and natural sources still exist in the environment. According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, almost every living creature has been exposed to dioxins. Dioxin exposure can occur through the diet, with small amounts of exposure coming from the breathing of air containing trace amounts of dioxin and from inadvertent ingestion of soil containing dioxins. Workplace exposures are also a possibility in certain industries. The health effects associated with dioxins depend on a variety of factors including the level of exposure when someone was exposed and for how long and how often someone is exposed. Studies have shown that exposure to dioxin at high enough levels may cause a number of adverse health effects including cancer. The most obvious non-cancer health effect in people exposed to large amounts of dioxin is chloracne. Chloracne is a severe skin disease with acne-like lesions that occur mainly on the face and upper body. Other non-cancer effects of exposure to large amounts of dioxin include developmental and reproductive effects, damage to the immune system, interference with hormones, skin rashes, skin discoloration, excessive body hair, and possible liver damage.
Dioxin could lead to the alteration in expression of gene, cell replication, and apoptosis. The mechanism of action for this compound begin with the extraordinarily high affinity binding to the AHR after entering the cell. The AHR or aryl hydrocarbon receptor is an aromatic hydrocarbon receptor in the cytoplasm of cells. AHR binding of ligand in the cytoplasm of cells is associated with two molecules of chaperone heat shock protein HSP90 and hydrocarbon receptor interactive protein AIP. HSP90 is a molecular chaperone known to regulate protein function in order to allow cells to adjust to intra and extracellular stresses. The nuclear localization will then be exposed after the release of AIP causing the translocation of the AHR from cytoplasm to the nucleus. Next, the unbinding of HSP90 within the nucleus will lead to AHR heterodimerize with aryl hydrocarbon receptor nucleotide translocator ARNT forming a heterodimeric transcription factor which is also known as AHR ARNT complex. The AHR ARNT complex will then recognize a specific DNA sequence and bind to dioxin responsive element DRE located at the upstream of the promoter of CYP1A1 gene. These protein DNA interactions at the DRE are associated with an alteration in its chromatin structure in vivo. This will lead to the alteration of gene expression. Induction of CYP1A1 transcription will then occur and causing false signal on the AHR receptor giving a powerful impact that change the normal regulation of certain body mechanisms. C1P1A1 has the ability to convert aromatic hydrocarbons, which is the main structure of AHR, into a carcinogen. Organochlorine Organochlorine is an organic compound containing at least one bounded chlorine atom. Organochlorine pesticides are chlorinated hydrocarbon used extensively in agriculture and mosquito control. The most commonly found organochlorine pesticide, namely dichlorodipenetrichloroethane DDT, endosulfan, aldrin, lindrin, chlordecon, and others. They are highly persistent and highly lipopoicity. Organochlorine pesticide enter the environment after uses of pesticide, disposal of contaminated waste into landfills, and release from manufacturing factories that make this pesticide. Some organochlorine pesticides are volatile and stick to the soil or particles in the air. In aquatic system, sediments absorb organochlorine and bioaccumulate in fish and other aquatic mammals. American marine biologist Rachel Carson wrote Silent Spring in 1962. In it, she protested against the chemical industry and its unintended environmental effects. This, for Carson, exemplified the catastrophic accidental impact that humans can have on the environment. In Silent Spring, Carson focused specifically on the chemical DDT, which is used to kill mosquitoes. She chronicled how this pesticide affected animals throughout the food chain, exploring its impact on bird populations in particular. Carson argued that DDT had proved to be an indiscriminate killer. Its fatal effects were not just limited to mosquitoes, but extended to every insect it touched. 
Carson described the bioaccumulation effect in which the birds which consumed these insects built up higher and higher levels of DDT. Eventually they died and were in turn consumed by larger animals. This way, the chemical worked its way up the food chain, eventually reaching humans. Carson detailed the health effects that DDT had on humans, from liver disease to cancer. For Carson, this specific example was part of a wider message. To her, humanity should be wary of using our scientific advancements to solve environmental problems. Let's imagine Carson's views in action. A country decides to spray edible but non-digestible red dots around the countryside. Only insects eat the tiny red dots, but this doesn't mean they're contained to the insect population. Let's say a bird eats 10 insects, which each have one red dot in them, and so the bird consumes 10 red dots. Through this bioaccumulation, the bird faces a dangerous level of the dots and dies. A wolf then comes along and eats the bird with its 10 red dots alongside many others. The wolf can tolerate more red dots than the bird, but may still face other unforeseen problems. For example, the wolf's immune system may be weakened by the red dots, allowing a disease to kill the wolf when winter comes. Additionally, over time, the uneaten dots find their way into the soil and rivers. Villagers in the country fish and drink directly from the rivers, and over time, they build up a concentration of red dots in their bodies. While it doesn't kill them immediately, over the next 20 years, the villagers start to fall ill and die. Rachel Carson's Silent Spring helped spur the grassroots environmentalist movement in the 1960s. Her work helped end the use of DDT for agricultural purposes in the United States. Negative again. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Your annual we have been married for 10 years, but my wife never gets married. Yeah, we agree, but many, many times, but still fail to get. I suggest you uh, to do fertility test. I will set the appointment for both of you. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, but from the result, uh, both of you are in the time. Can I know why, doctor? I'm sorry, madam, but from the medical history, I noticed that both of you were at Can I know what kind of you were at? At the pesticide making company for 10 years, is there any way we get? We can get infertile because of our work. Long-term exposure to the chemical making of the pesticide can lead to infertile. So that's why both of you are infertile. Is there any way to to pregnant again? Okay, don't worry, madam. If both of you really want children, I can suggest you to do in vitro fertilization. EFOA has a carboxylic acid group C7F15COOH and they are fully fluorinated with at least one additional atom or functional group such as the ammonia. PFOA synonyms include perfluorooctanoic acid, pentadecafluoro 1 octanoic acid, Pentadecafluoro-N octanoic acid, pentadecafluorooctanoic acid, and octanoic acid. The half-life of PFOA in atmospheric water is different. In the atmospheric, the half-life of PFOA is 90 days. 
and more than 92 years old. The serum half-life in human and mice is also different. In human, it will be 2 until 4 years. In mice, 16 until 22 days. The FOA also have unique characteristics. The first one, it is oil resistant. And then, it is also heat resistant. And it is also water resistant. PFOA are lipo and hydrophobic. In our blood circulation, there will be, of course, blood cells, and then plasma protein, another plasma protein, plasma protein, and then PFOA would mainly accumulate in the blood. So there will be a lot of PFOA. BFOA and BFOA in the blood. So this is plasma protein and PFOA will be having the affinity to bind with the plasma protein while subsequently it will disrupt the plasma protein ligand binding. According to previous study, PFOA has been found able to bind to human estrogen, androgen, and thyroid hormone receptors. So it will bind to the estrogen and then to the androgen. But somehow, PFOA have a greater affinity to a human thyroid receptor in comparison with the other two. The diseases arise from the exposure of PFOA are quite a lot. In human, it might cause maternal anemia, dysfunctional liver, and then overweight, obesity, adverse outcomes in the reproductive tissue development or functions, kidney disease, cardiovascular disease, non-insulin dependent diabetes, elevation of serum IgA. In animals, PFOA will give a certain effect too. It will cause a broad range of health effects in animals such as liver toxicity, decrease in body weight, mortality, immune system effects, behavioral changes, abnormal memory gland development and also developmental delays. Disposition of fluorinated chemicals can be done by reducing treatment technologies such as reverse osmosis, nanofiltration and activated carbon that can eliminate fluorinated chemicals from water. Currently, the other alternative for replacing PFOA are by using the shorter chain compounds of fluorinated chemicals such as perfluorobutane C4 sulfonate and perfluorohexanoic acid C6. PBTE Polybrominated dipene ethers. PBDE are classes of brominated hydrocarbon compound containing two penny rings linked by oxygen molecule and each ring is surrounded by up to 10 bromine atoms. There are three commercialized PBDE homologs 
which are penta bromo dipenyl ether, which consists of five bromine atom, octa bromo dipenyl ether, which consists of eight bromine atom, deca bromo dipenyl ether, which consists of ten bromine atom. PBDEs hide in fitted carpets and rugs, washing machines, cookers, hods, toasters, refrigerators, mixers, irons, dishwashers, microwaves, mattresses and pillows, radio alarm clocks, pipes, tents, furniture material and fillings, couches, curtains, office chairs, printed circuits, fax machines, computers, printers, the packaging of all these objects, light bulbs, plugs, cables and wires, batteries, car equipment, car radios, car batteries, ventilators, hair dryers, hoovers, hair curlers or straighteners, telephones, televisions, remote controls, DVD players, hi-fis, radios, etc., etc. Even in 1970, the levels of PBDEs in human either breast milk or blood were essentially non-detect, and that these levels increased very rapidly between 1970 and, say, 2000. To our surprise, the major route of exposure to these chemicals, at least in America, appears to be related to their presence in dust, house dust, office dust, car dust. When we think dust, we wonder how is it getting into people if it's in the dust? Well, little children we know are always putting their fingers in their mouth and they're crawling around on the floor. But in fact, dust gets into adults as well, and much of it has to do with people, consciously or not, putting their hands into their mouths. Children are generally exposed to PBDE the same way as adults, mainly by eating contaminated food. PBDE also have been found in breast milk and placenta tissue. Infants might be exposed to PBDE from breast milk, also fetus through placenta. <laughs> Our animal uh, toxicity studies that demonstrate that, that various flame retardants are neurotoxic. So e essentially we have that um, evidence, but the problem is that animal brains are less complex than human brains, and we're not sure how to um, translate that evidence into risk assessment for humans. The first studies are, have ju are just being reported about the effects of the PBDEs in the human population. And what we're seeing in many cases mirror almost exactly the kinds of effects that we see in the animals. So I think it is reasonable to assume that the animal data is at least predictive or certainly suggestive of what may happen in people. Hundreds of chemicals are known to have endocrine disrupting effects and about thousands of other chemicals that are potential to be endocrine disruptive chemicals have not been looked for or even tested. Keep educating yourself to learn more about this chemical for your health and for your future. Good 